How old are we all here? Okay, just shout it out. Eight. Eight. Wow. Wow, there's a big range here. Great. Nice. Does anybody know what paleontology is? Okay, what is it? It's a thing where you dig through fossils mm -hmm. and like all you like have like different like, tools and digging rocks and like, Excellent. Rocks. And that is you. We're gonna give you a little check. Nice. All right. Is everybody else did everybody else hear that answer? Great. All right. Well let me tell you why I'm here. My name is Barnes. And lots of people call me Barney, like Barney the Dinosaur, as my name <laughs> sounds so much like Barney at the very beginning of it. And I wrote a book, and it's up there on the table. It's that orange book there called The Furious Case of the Fraudulent Fossil. And I'll tell you a little bit about some of my experience in paleontology and a little bit about a little bit about some other things that are going on in paleontology these days. So, and this book is part of a series that we have called the Galactic Academy of Science. Now, let me tell you why this is really cool, okay? This is like a club. This is like a club for kids who like science or engineering, or they just like to do good things. And these characters you see here, Quark and Phonon, we've got another one here, this girl, her name is, is uh, Selectra Bolt. They are the mentors for this Galactic Academy of Science series. And if you're interested, you can take a look at the book in the back, and I'll tell you a little bit about how the series goes. Basically, you get a little time travel device, and you get to go back in time, you get to choose any time you want to, you get to visit different scientists and engineers from the past. So for instance, in my book, you might visit a, uh, a Chinese scientist from a very long time ago who helped invent some of the sciences behind paleontology, who helped invent some of uh, the, what we call uh, stratigraphy or geology. He helped invent some of that science. And you get to visit that time period and learn a little bit about the rocks. And at the end, you win a nice big prize, which is just like our own gas club, our real world gas club. You win a big prize, and maybe you win your science fair, and you go on to great success. And our slogan, just so you know, this is very important to remember, when you're at your local <laughs> bookstore, or you're at your local library, you should always ask, do you have gas? <laughs> it's very important, because they don't have gas, they should have gas. So let me ask you guys, how do you study evolution and paleontology? Does anybody know? What, what are the ways you study evolution and paleontology? Yeah, Lucy. Well, you could like, look at bones or something? You could look at bones. Excellent. That's already, you, you're just like reading my mind. That was the very first answer. Awesome. I'm going to give you a point for that. Nice. And anything else? Can anybody else think, uh, anybody else think of anything else that you might want to use in paleontology? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And actually, later today, the activities you've got, uh, I believe the activities are back there somewhere. Uh, actually, you've got one right there in yeah, your hand. Yeah, they all have yep, one. They've got a little tool in there, and, uh, and we'll show you how that works later on. Uh, but I mean, things, things that you would study. Yes, Grace. Um, oh, things that you would study? Mm -hmm. um, Okay, just shoot out anything in your head. No? Okay. We'll see you again. Huh? Uh, would you study the rocks around it? You would. You, exactly. The environment. You would study the rocks around it. Yep. Alana? There's, you, there's another name for bones. You could also say fossils. You could say fossils. That's right. So we will be talking about fossils. So to make it easier, since we don't have too much time, sorry about this poll in the way. We should actually... Can, some, can somebody move this poll? Um... There's a, a few, this is maybe a little bit complicated for you guys, but you know, genes and DNA, some of the things you hear about when you, uh, you watch CSI or, or mystery uh, <laughs> adventure type, type things with police, they study DNA, they study genes. Uh, I've been studying eggshells and, and feathers, which are, are, uh, what are what are known as trace fossils. And, and actually, I've got some fossils up here that I'll be showing you that include some dinosaur eggshells and, uh, and feathers. These are pictures of me studying along with a guy, a uh, pretty famous guy. His name is Jack Horner. Has anybody heard of Jurassic Park, the movie Jurassic Park? You all have. Great. Well, he's the guy who is the basis of the lead character. So when you watch Jurassic Park or you hear about Jurassic Park, there's, there's a paleontologist in there, and it's based on this guy right here. So I naturally, I put him in my book. So this guy, his name is uh, Dr. Jack Horner, and he does a lot of work with, with dinosaur babies. He studied, he's very famous for studying dinosaur eggs 
and studying how bones are oriented. So a lot like what we were talking about environment. And you can see here he's pointing at some bones that are all lined up. And, and here I was on a dig site with Jack. And you can see all the bones here are lined up. They're right below me and that you can't see them in this picture, but they're all lined up. So that might mean that maybe the bones were in a stream or they were in some sort of water and the water as it was moving by lined them all up in a row. So that's something, something we learned by looking at the fossils and not just looking at the bones, but how they're placed, the things around them, their environment. And you can see here, we stayed in teepees. It was, it was really cold. Believe it or not, it's in the middle of the desert, but it was really cold. And although paleontology is lots of fun, there's lots of other things that are really dangerous and scary, like bears and badgers, large rocks that can fall on you, windstorms that hit uh, with a, just a few seconds notice. Not to mention, when you're sitting out there in the desert, I don't know if you guys can see, but that's the road back home. It doesn't look like a road, does it? Nope. So if you get hurt or you get dehydrated, you don't drink enough water, you're actually in big trouble. You actually will not be able to get to a hospital in time. So, so there's lots of fun, but there's lots of danger. And that's what makes science really adventurous and really fun. So here you can see me. I took a nap. I took a nap next to a, a, a fossil that we're going to be talking about when we go up to the table here. But this, you can call him Fido. Okay? <laughs> I nicknamed him Fido because he's actually a Phytosaur, a Phytosaurus. And these guys are related to alligators. So what you're seeing here is the head of an alligator, an ancient alligator from hundreds of millions of years, years ago. And I'm using picks and brushes, just like you guys will be doing a little bit later on when you're using your fossil activity kit. So this is what a phytosaur look like. They look a lot like alligators, right? Yeah. A whole lot like them. But you can see on the bottom here, they're a lot bigger than alligators because that's a dinosaur. So they could actually eat dinosaurs. Whoa, that's right. <coughs> what does that sound like? <coughs> Lila, you had your hand up first. Lion. Yes. It is a lion. And just for giggles, we'll listen to the other one. That one makes it more clear, right? Yeah. And what kind of a dinosaur might a lion sound like? Lucy? That's how it sounds. Exactly. Here, pop on the next screen there. So... <coughs> give you another check. Yeah, a Tyrannosaurus rex, or an Allosaurus, or any other big, gigantic dinosaur. We call them all theropods. And actually, I've got a, a theropod to show you in just a short while. These rings, these little bones inside the eyes, what they would have done was they would have helped it see better at night or focus on things far away. So they could actually squeeze in real tight and get real big and, and help the animal see much, much better. So this right here, just, just to let you guys know, this here is not a T-Rex, but it's closely related to a T-Rex. And I'll tell you later on, if you want to go to our website, I actually made this skull from, from scratch. And you guys can make it yourself, too. It's very, very easy, relatively easy to make, and very inexpensive to make. So hopefully you guys will get a chance to take a look at that and try to build your very own dinosaur skull someday. And you can compare it to, to this. So this is an alligator skull. And normally what we would do as a paleontologist is we would compare, you know, we would compare baby skulls to juvenile skulls to what we think would be full-grown adult skulls and see how similar they are to each other. So does anybody have any questions? Anybody want to touch a Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth? Yeah? 